Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, ForeFlight introduces new dual band ADSB receiver. Successful first flight for Airbus UAV demonstrator Sajida. GOP congressman joined bipartisan chorus of opposition to ATC privatization. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's July 20th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. ForeFlight has announced the availability of Scout, a portable dual band ADSB receiver that delivers in flight weather and traffic information to the ForeFlight mobile app in a small form factor, retailing at $199. US dollars. We are excited to bring Scout to market in collaboration with UAVionics, said Tyson Wees, a ForeFlight co founder and CEO. We want every pilot flying with the benefits of ADSB in. The combination of an ADSB in solution with ForeFlight makes flying safer and we believe has led to a meaningful reduction in the weather related incidents and accidents. ForeFlight teamed up with UAVionics to design and manufacture Scout. Scout has an ultra compact form factor at 3.4 inches by 0.8 inch by 0.3 inch and weighs in at 0.6 ounces. The dual ADSB antennas are optimized for 978 MHz and 1090 MHz frequencies and are integrated into the casing to create Scout's compact design, the traffic awareness capability functions worldwide. Scout is easy to set up and use, there's no hardware to assemble, no software to download and nothing to configure. Simply position on any window surface using Scout's flexible ball joint and suction cup mounting system plug into a power source, and go fly. Scout can be powered using any 5-volt micro USB power source, including existing USB chargers installed in an aircraft or rechargeable USB batteries. All four flight subscription plans support connectivity with Scout. Airbus Defense and Space has successfully tested a new type of aircraft that will aid the development of future UAVs for series production. The unmanned jet-propelled demonstrator, with the project name Sajida, flew completely autonomously for around seven minutes over the test site in Overberg, South Africa, on a pre-programmed course. The innovative flying wing construction demonstrated excellent flight characteristics during the test. This flight marked the successful completion of the first test phase, which also comprised of an extensive series of ground tests. The demonstrator is the product of the Open Innovation Sajida National Initiative, launched by Airbus in 2010. The project sees Airbus working together with institutes from the Technical Universities of Munich and Chemnitz, the University of the Federal Armed Forces in Munich, the Ingolstadt University of Applied Sciences, and the German Aerospace Center, DLR, to jointly develop advanced technologies for unmanned flight. To achieve this, the inter-institutional research team adopted approaches from academic and industrial research, developed these further, and incorporated them into solutions for industrial application. Airbus facilitated the continuous exchange between experts, doctoral students, and developers during the development stage. After the break, ATC privatization opposition grows. Progressive Aerodyne C-Ray Elite offers turbocharged Rotax Power and Garmin G3X Touch Avionics. Incredibly well equipped, you can fly away in this best in category Amphib for less than $160,000. Visit CRay.com for more details. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. Five Republican congressmen have come out in opposition to a proposal to privatize air traffic control, currently under consideration in the U.S. House as part of the FAA reauthorization bill. 
In a July 13th letter sent to U.S. House leaders, the five GOP lawmakers request that any provision for privatizing ATC be withheld from floor consideration. This request is a result of our deep and multifaceted concerns over the detrimental effects that privatization would have on the national airspace system, states the letter sent to House leadership and signed by representatives Ralph Abraham, Tom Cole, Ron Estes, Walter B. Jones, and Steve Russell. Proposals for privatizing ATC have been pushed by the big airlines as part of a continuing debate over FAA reauthorization. Under such proposals, congressional oversight of the nation's aviation system would be replaced by an entity governed by a private group, unaccountable to Congress. On July 21st, House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee Chairman Bill Schuster introduced H.R. 2997, a bill containing provisions for privatizing ATC. Establishing a private ATC board outside the purview of Congress with the unilateral power to collect fees and distribute service would threaten safety, accessibility, affordability, and pilot generation, which is already in a critical state, the five GOP lawmakers note. After these messages, NBAA applauds some Walt selection. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Robert L. Sumwalt III is to be the 14th chair of NTSB, a move praised by the MBAA. Noting Sumwalt's extensive and successful career in aviation makes him a compelling choice for heading an organization that is dedicated to improving aviation safety. The first Legacy 500 mid-sized business jet assembled at Embraer's industrial facilities in Melbourne, Florida has flown for the first time. Just eight months after the first Legacy 450 mid-light jet assembled and Melbourne took flight. The aircraft performed as expected and all flight test procedures were successfully completed. For the first time, the commemorative Air Force Red Tail Squadron, America's tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen, will be a featured attraction at KidVenture. Inside EAA's Air Ventures World Greatest Aviation Celebration. All are welcome to step inside the Rise Above Traveling Exhibit Mobile Movie Theater and be inspired by the Tuskegee Airmen, our country's first black military pilots and their support personnel. Affinity Flying Training Services is delighted to announce that the Grobe 120TP, the prefect, has achieved military release to service and is a step closer to commencing its role as the next elementary flying training aircraft for the UK Ministry of Defense. The Prefect is the first of a suite of new training aircraft due to enter service from 2017, which will support the fixed-wing element of the UK Military Flying Training System program. The Eagles of Strike Fighter Squadron 115 achieved a major safety milestone by surpassing 100,000 Class A mishap-free flight hours July 3rd. The accomplishment was logged while the squadron was conducting operations from the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan in the Coral Sea. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. NASA has acquired a second Technam P2006T fuselage to speed the evaluating process in the survey of potentialities of LeapTech with the aim of developing safer, more energy-efficient, lower operating costs, and greener GA aircraft. X-57 is the first NASA X-plane to feature a fully distributed electric propulsion system, which researchers will use to demonstrate an increase in crew's energy efficiency, as well as reductions in carbon emission and aircraft noise, 
the wing will be manufactured and integrated on the P-2006T fuselage by the U.S.-based company Experimental. NASA's aeronautical innovators hope to validate the idea that distributing electric power across a number of motors integrated with an aircraft in this way will result in a five-time reduction in the energy required for a private plane to cruise at 175 miles per hour. Researchers hope to fly an early version of the modified Technam P-2006T piloted X-plane early next year, enabling NASA engineers to easily compare the performance of the X-57 version with the standard production Technam P-2006T twin. Before flying the real aircraft, test pilots and engineers at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards, California, are flying a simulator design to the innovative specifications of the X-57 Maxwell, which will be NASA's first piloted X-plane in two decades. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.